You're listening to the Happier Marriage Secrets Podcast, and today we'll, you'll discover the secret to creating an emotionally safe space in your marriage so that you and your spouse can experience deeper connection and have a more satisfying marriage. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Happier Marriage Podcast, a podcast for spouses longing to have a happier marriage so they can feel more connected, desired and supported. Now to start the show, here is your host and Sherpa, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified relationship coach, Kingsley Grant. Let's start with this question. How emotionally safe do you feel in your marriage where you can openly share what's on your heart, what's bothering you, or is of concern to you? Do you feel safe enough to do that? If you can't um, say yes, that you feel safe enough, this episode is especially designed with you in mind. In my work as a licensed marriage and family therapist, and a certified relationship coach, I've worked with hundreds of couples who present with a number of issues, but I can tell you that one of the things I hear more often than not is this idea of being fearful to bring up difficult topics, have difficult conversations with your partner because of the fear of what might happen. Now, many times this is from past experiences, whether it's from their personal, I mean, their present relationship or some relationship in the past, or it has been the messages they've received from their partner. You know, sometimes they may attempt to bring something up and they'll hear, I just don't have time for that. I'm not in the mood to talk about that you know what, don't bring this up now. I can't believe that you still are holding on to that. We've got to move past this. You know, things like that may have been said. Maybe you have heard that yourself. And so it keeps you from even attempting to bring up things that are concerning to you, that are bothering you. And so you feel like you have to stuff them, right? And keep on stuffing them. But what happens is that you are, over time, also building a case against your partner. Oh, he is just so stubborn. She is so difficult to talk to. She must be on her monthly cycle. He must be on his midlife crisis. And we use different ways to describe what might be happening to deflect and to not have the conversation. And so you're made to feel like you're crazy or you're doing something wrong, which only leads to, as you know this better than I do, is that it leads to more distancing, right? You begin to distance yourself from your partner. And it may be in a very subtle way. And sometimes you're disconnecting. And you feel, you don't, you don't feel close to him. You don't feel as close to her. And you just kind of go through the motions sometimes because you're hurt and you're carrying this pain, this burden, because you just feel as if he, she won't even have this conversation. And you're thinking that, men, aren't you supposed to be my safe space? Aren't you supposed to be my, um, the place I can come and talk about these things? So this doesn't help either of you, right? And that is why it is so important to create emotionally safe spaces in your marriage so that you and your partner can experience a more satisfying and deeper connected marriage. And that is what we'll do right after this. So the big question is this, how is it possible that you have a happier marriage when you feel like you've tried everything? Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. So, would it be safe to say that what you want is a marriage 
that is like a sanctuary where you feel like you and your spouse can weather life's storms together? Would that be safe to assume that's what you are here for? Would it also be safe to assume that you don't want your marriage to feel like a battleground where every conversation feels like you're walking on eggshells? Would it be safe to assume that? So I'm going to assume that is why you're here. And today we're exploring the what happens when you're able to create emotionally safe space in your marriage or spaces. There is a transformative power to that. It allows you to feel empowered and feel closer and feel more intimate and connected with your spouse. Would I would it be safe to say that? What I think it also does is provides what I would call a cornerstone that what happens is either going to solidify your marriage, your bond, or if it's not there, it's going to leave it crumbling because why? There is unresolved conflict and the weight of that eventually will come crashing down. You know, I would mean many times when I work with clients and couples, I would say what I'm hearing is. There are unfinished business in the relationship. And they will many times say, yes, you are right. We have unfinished business in the marriage. And so any marriage that is experiencing that, it's only a matter of time before things give way because it cannot bear the weight of that forever. And is it any wonder so many marriages experiencing experiences the sad, unfortunate outcome of separation and divorce because there are unfinished business. There are things that needed to be talked through and worked through, but they're not. They were not because of this very thing that exists within the marriage. You know, Robert Frost, he once said this, that good fences make good neighbors. But what if those fences were built not to keep others out, but to create a safe haven within? And really what he's simply saying is we got to find a way to recognize that we have to do some things different and put guardrails, fences, um, boundaries, and a number of things in place for us to feel safe within our marriage is to keep things out and protect us and protect those moments of having those conversations. You know, I've been married as of this recording 38 years plus. And my wife and I have had our share of moments where we feel, we felt, I felt, she felt, where we were walking on eggshells with each other. There are different times we just had to tiptoe in the relationship. There were times where we felt as if we were not connecting. We were disconnected and there were distance that has was created in our relationship. We weathered the storm. Thank God we weathered weathered those storms. But the story could be a whole lot different. I can tell you that. There are times when I felt like, you know, giving up. And my wife knows this, and I'm not saying something that is, she would not agree that she would also say she felt like giving up at, at certain times in our relationship. But we kept going. We kept going because we were, number one, committed to our relationship. We also believed that divorce was not an option for us. Why? Well, um, for a number of reasons. One of the primary reasons for us is because of our faith in God. We trust that God could help us to navigate those storms. And God did through prayer and wise counsel and us trusting that with time and prayer and working on our relationship, God would get us there. And I can tell you there are more than one time that we experienced that in our relationship. But here we are 38 years later. So I know it's possible. Now, I'm speaking now from a place we are having in, as a professional and, a, you know, in as a marriage family life and marriage family, I mean, <laughs> marriage and family therapist and a certified relationship coach. I've been doing it for almost two decades. So I understand now what it is we were doing. At the time, I did not. I didn't realize that when we were having those difficult conversations, 
we were creating safe spaces. One of the ways we created a safe space was we were we also went to see a counselor. We saw we saw godly wisdom from people we trusted, and that was creating a safe space for us to have conversations about matters that we felt were needed to have had those conversations. They were tough at times, but we felt safe enough in those environment to have those conversations. What we learned again is, you know, we always, you know, all of us are always learning. We also learned that what happened is, what if we were able to create that safe space in our own relationship? What that looked like? One of those things that we have established in our relationship, in our marriage, is to have weekly date nights. So that becomes an emotional safe space for us. We can keep short accounts, right? I remember sometimes someone saying, a way back in my early years of our relationship that we should try to keep short accounts, right? Don't keep accounts that are overdraft or prolonged things. Try to bring things up to date. And so when we go out on our date night, it's not a whole lot of heavy lifting because we have, in a sense, created ongoing ways of communicating those things, bringing those things up. But we have our date night to somehow put the icing on the cake and many times a way of just connecting deeper. And we also would go away on vacations and find time to get away for our, by ourselves. So I know in the early stages, it was not as easy because we had younger kids. Our kids are older now. But what we recognize, and I have recognized the importance of that, especially, as I've said, worked with hundreds of couples and they I see what has happened. I see how their marriage and their relationship is struggling. And this is these are some of the things I help them with. But I believe establishing a safe, an emotional safe space is critical. It is a primary, and I would say a prerequisite. It's a very important aspect of your relationship. Without that, you're going to have what I call emotional insecurity. Emotional insecurity. Have you ever felt insecure in your marriage? Emotionally. Um, you feel like you're not cared for, your spouse don't take the time to make you a priority. You know, I was speaking to, speaking to someone recently and I asked her, it's a female, a, a, a colleague of mine, I said to her, um, why is it that women, a wife, would make such a big deal about feeling emotionally safe? What is it about that? Now, I have an idea because I have worked with couples and studied and recognized the importance of that. But I wanted to hear from a a colleague, a female colleague, to see what it is that she would say. And she said that this is the way a wife feels as if she is a priority and she comes first in the relationship. She feels as if her husband would put everything and anything and everyone aside, including children, for her. That is why she is so big on emotional security, emotional uh, yeah, security. So I, I recognize that. And I, I said to her, and this we were doing this um, call, I said to her, for, for men, for us, what I find is it's we're after something very similar, even though we don't say emotional security, because, you know, most men, we don't necessarily want to be in our emotions because we were taught that way. We have social construct and You know, society have taught us that. And you know, if you're a man listening to this, you know what I'm talking about. And so I said to her, for us, it's something similar, even though we don't call it that. What we want is to make sure that our wives support us, believe in us, is proud of us. We want to make certain that she knows I am, you know, doing my best and she believes in me and and supports me. Those are the things we are looking for. That's what it would be the the um what would be um the equal expression for men for women is emotional security that's a phrase they might use we would say support and be proud of us and believe in us so imagine then if you were at sea and you know i'm not necessarily a person that would be at sea at night unless i'm on a cruise then i don't mind because somebody else is captain in you know as a captain who's piloting that 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 ship that boat but imagine you're at sea and you're out in the darkness because it can be very dark out there. I remember we were on a cruise one time and I looked out 
you know, at um, that night, we couldn't we could not see anything other than the the ship where we were on. No lights anywhere. The I look at the farthest I could look. It was so dark, and I mean, I mean, deathly dark. And I can't imagine what it is for somebody to be lost at sea. But what happened is, if you were lost at sea and you had no lighthouse, something that you can look at to give you an idea of where you are, that's it's what marriage without emotional safety feels like. It feels like you're out in this ocean, it's so black, pitch black, but you have no light. There's nothing that you could see that t- tells you that, you know, there's land in sight or there's a light, a lighthouse, something I can roll my boat or, you know, um, drive my engine of my ship to that place. Marriage is like that where you don't have emotional safety. So when you don't have emotional safety, as you might be experiencing or have experienced, there is, you're going to have a lot of defensiveness. And I mentioned before, withdrawal and disconnection and, you know, lack of intimacy. Don't feel intimate to your your husband, to your wife. Don't feel connected. But you're also going to have a lot of escalating conflict. Everything becomes a big deal. It's almost like the straw that breaks the camel's back. So everything is an explosion. It, the smallest thing. And you would say, come on, this is such a, a trivial thing. But to that person, it's not the thing. It's what that thing adds to. It's one more layer for them. You know, Robert Anderson says this, in every marriage more than a week old, there are grounds for divorce. The trick is to find and continue to find grounds for marriage. You know, what you look for, you'll find. You know, Jesus taught this in the, in the, in the Bible. He says, seek and you shall find. Keep on seeking and you will find what you're looking for. So whatever you're looking for, you'll find more of that very thing. That's what happens many times in a relationship, especially when you don't feel safe. Everything becomes a big thing. So I just wanted to share that as a backdrop in what it is that when you don't have emotional safety, you're going to experience a high tension and anxiety and depression and sadness and disconnection and on and on. And you know that if you've ever experienced emotional insecurity. So how do we then set begin with this whole emotional safety? What are the foundation? Well, there are a number of things. I, I'm going to just touch on a brief amount in our in this episode because I, we could go on and on uh, for this. By the way, I did a YouTube video on this a similar topic. So if you want to see and hear a little bit more about when I talk about the four, I share four things that I call the four bricks or four blocks of building emotional safety. You may want to, if you go to my YouTube channel at Kings of the Grant, you will find that there and can watch it and make sure you subscribe if you do go to my YouTube channel, and I would really appreciate that. Now, I want you to, to think of emotional safety like this sturdy bridge that connects um, two islands. You know, for example, where I live, I live in South Florida in the United States, and we have a number of bridges that we have to cross to get to another island. And sometimes when the bridge is, you know, the 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 um the bridge may be up, right? So the, the, the drawbridge may be up because a big ship is coming through and you get stuck and you sit there because this bridge, you can't cross over because the bridge is opened and you sit there and you sit there and you wait and, you know, God help you if you're in a hurry to get someplace. Once that bridge starts coming up, you can't cross. You can't cross because the bridge is open. But at the moment the bridge goes down, you see people are just rushing across who were wanting to get to where they want to go because now the bridge feels it's now ready for, to cross over. It feels sturdy, it's, it's um, crossable, and it connects two different islands, right? It's like that when you have emotional safety in your relationship. It allows you to connect yourself with your partner, and it allows you to then travel across back and forth with ease because the bridge is down. And so you can able to to kind of um, navigate life's challenges together. You can cross. There is that continual crossing of relationship. I'm sorry, of of, um, conversation. You can talk about anything because that bridge is sturdy enough to hold it up. So you want to be able to get to the place where your bridge is so sturdy that you can put any weight on there because that same bridge that I mentioned earlier, 
not only do cars go across that bridge, but there are humongous trucks that cross those bridges. So the bridge is so sturdy, it holds up the heaviest of trucks. Now, I don't know if there is a weight limit many times. I don't see a sign. There might be for some vehicles, right? But I think for the most part, and, you know, all, all things being equal, any vehicle can, vehicle can cross that bridge because why? The bridge is set is sturdy enough. And that is true, must be true in your relationship where it feels sturdy enough where you can cross over and have deep conversation. And so emotional safety, it lays the groundwork, right? When you are able to have that bridge, you feel you can trust the bridge, right? You can be, you don't have to even think twice about that you are just you just drive across a bridge without thinking about this bridge not being able to hold you up. So it's like that in your marriage because you feel more vulnerable. You can be more, have open communication. You can trust your partner. Why? Because that bridge, you know the bridge is, is going to hold you up. Why? Because you guys put in the right foundation for that bridge. And so it's so inc- critically important that by having that, you know, this is one of those things I talk about many times, whether in my coaching or my counseling with my, my clients, telling them how to and sharing with them. I go a bit deeper, of course, because I have to listen to, to their stories individually. But I, I said, what can we now deposit in this bridge building so you can be able to cross over on both sides and feel safe? And that's what we work on many times in our relationship. The other thing I want to mention is... Um, how you build your emotional, let's call it a safe haven, right? A safe place, a safe room that you can go. You know, I I um, live in an area where we have hurricanes. It's not as, you know, uh, it's not as often as it used to be. It's almost predictable that every single year would have hurricanes. So when my kids were much younger and uh, we would establish this idea of a safe place to go, in case of a hurricane should come and really, you know, do damage to our home. One year we had some damage done, but thank God our foundation of our house remained intact. There's one room that the roof inside the ceiling caved in because the water was pouring in and it could not hold it up anymore. And it came because it was leaking. There's a big leak that we had in our roof and that room gave way. I mean, that room had to be rebuilt. Thank God it was contained in that one room. But we had established a safe place. We said, if a hurricane comes or a tornado comes, because we do, um, period, periodically would have her, tor- tornadoes, not too much where, where we live, but it would come every now and then. I said, we would go into our bathroom or into our closet. So we established a closet and our bathroom as a safe space. We were told, and I have been told many times, that those are safe places to be, should in case you are experiencing a tornado or a hurricane. So we knew we had that and we would go in there and feel safe because we established that. That is what you're doing here. You're establishing a safe haven, a safe room, a safe space where you can be able to um, have active listening, for example. We are listening. You're not trying to interrupt. You have rules of engagement. We're about being, being respectful. You're able to acknowledge and validate the other person's feelings. You don't have to agree, but you have to acknowledge that. You're able to set boundaries because it's so important to have boundaries in place. These are the things that an emotional safe room or safe heaven needs to have. This is so important. And I love what the Bible says in First Peter 4, verse 8. It says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of of sins, right? So love overrules. Love will cover even the flaws that you see. Love will allow you to be present and join your partner in that moment in a loving way. Again, loving them may not necessarily agree with them, but not because you don't agree with them. That means you have to be nasty. Have you means you have to be mean? No, you're acknowledging, you're listening to active listening and you can find all of that on the internet. You can, you know, um, look up what active listening is all about and um, as effective communication. So I'm sure you may have already come across those things. Those are some of the things that will happen in that room, but you cannot use those effectively. And this is where I think many times counselors and therapists and coaches miss it. 
They're encouraging people to, oh, just practice effective communication and it's going to be okay. No, it's not. It can't be okay until you have a safe place because you can do more damage in trying to use those effective so-called communication skills. As a matter of fact, I think many times it's overrated because people are trying those things, but yet they're not being able to have a change relationship. Why? Because this part is missing and other parts as well, which I won't, don't have time to get into. Now, there's going to be a times where even you, you're establishing those things, you're going to have pushbacks, right? You're going to have a resistance that's going to come. Each of us is going to feel a certain way because our brain is trying to tell us, be on guard, be on guard. Hmm. Huh. What's going on here? So we're going to be suspicious at times. We're going to have this suspicious m- approach. So we are going to also be not naive to think that there's not going to be some resistance. So we're going to overcome obstacles to emotional safety, right? We have to be able to look at the common obstacles that may come. So what may rise is past hurts. And that, and this is not just because you are, your memory is recalling those things, but also remember there is a devil, an adversary. Satan is also trying to keep you apart. He doesn't want you to have this connection. He doesn't want you to have, uh, feel, you know, uh, intimate with your partner. He doesn't want you to feel um, satisfied in your relationship. He wants to keep this going. Why? Because he's, he's a father of all lies and he wants your relationship to fail. Satan is ruling, is routing for your failure. Don't forget that. So he will remind you of how this person, your, your husband, your wife, don't forget, you know, what she did to you. Don't forget that she said these things to you. Don't forget that he did this thing to you. Don't forget that she said that nasty thing. Don't forget, right? That's what Satan is trying to do. But don't buy into that. So you want to recognize also communication patterns because, and again, we could get off into tangent here, but I'm just mentioning these things. Also, an obstacle that may come is a fear of vulnerability. You may fear that, you know, what if I open up with my husband or my wife and then they use that against me. They weaponize that against me. So I understand that's real, but we've got to guard against that. If we're going to be real and get past that, we've got to create a safe place where these things are going to, well, even when they come up, be able to regulate your emotions, manage your emotions, um, practice emotional intelligence. All those things have to happen for you to be able to overcome those moments because What's going to happen is that we have to then recognize these things and um, and push through. And, and sometimes, like I said, with myself, my wife, you have to get third party and get someone else to get you started and get used to the idea. You know, um, Alan Watts says this, the only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. So we have to then take the action. We have to decide that if something is going to change, we got to do something different. Because my friend, as you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So emotional safety then is the bedrock of a thriving marriage, right? It is the bedrock that allows you to build trust and intimacy and resilience and all the other traits that are necessary for a strong marriage. So I want to encourage you today to um, prioritize creating an emotional safe space in your marriage. And then I would love to hear how you're doing that, right? They can share that experience, what's going on there. And I would love to hear from you. And you can also, you know, always uh, send me a direct message on Instagram. You can, um, when you see this post on, on social media, you can also make sure that you um, comment there and you can always ask me questions. I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, when you go and watch my YouTube channel, you can also make comments there as well. And my friend, I want to say, take, take, say thanks for listening and being here today. And I hope this episode was very helpful, which I believe it is. So let me hear from you and make sure that you subscribe and leave a review on this um, ep- uh, podcast, either on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Again, I would love to hear your feedback there as well. And I have a final word for you that is going to come right after this. So thank you. Stay tuned for the final word. It's something I have for you there as well.
We've come to the end of another fantastic episode of the Happy Marriage Secrets podcast, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here. And so what I've done is created for you a free resource that provides you with 28 days of topics you and your spouse can talk about. It allows you to pick one each day and choose a time to discuss it with your partner. This can be done in as little as five minutes and up to 15 minutes. I don't suggest you go beyond 15 minutes. Why? It's better to feel like you could talk more, but restrain yourself because this is one way to build excitement in your relationship. You can have this free resource by sending me a direct message on Instagram at Kingsley Grant, or you could go to happiermarriagesecrets.com and slash save happiermarriagesecrets.com slash safe and you can have access to this free resource. Follow the instructions and get your free copy right away. It will be in your inbox before you say, what's that? <laughs> It'll be there. And if you go to my Instagram, would you also please follow me there? I would really appreciate that. For your convenience, the links will also be in the show description that follows this episode. With that said, my friend, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and may you experience his peace as you pursue a more satisfying and deeper connected marriage. God bless. See you on the flip side.